Okay, so in the last tutorial, we created a cube in Maya uh, using Python. Uh, well, you know, we want to do something useful with that. Hey, uh, what do we want to move that? What do we want to scale that? What do we want to just do some basic transformations to that? Okay, what? how do we do that? So if I go polycube, uh, let's do a basic polycube, okay? This will generate a, uh, um, uh, a polygon for us. Obviously, I need to go CMDS, and I need to make sure that this line is in there. Uh, uh, for, for, to get all my Python commands. Okay, let's just put a move in. So I can go cmds.move. Okay, uh, and I can just specify a, a, a series of a series of values uh, uh, as my move coordinate. So I'm just going to move it to. I'm just putting something random here now. Three, four. There we are. Look how creative I am. Right. So if I press play, you can see it's created a polycube and it's moved it to that coordinate there, rather than having it in the center there. So if I run that, just run these pieces of line, lines here without the move, kaboom, you just see it's in the center. So it, it puts it in the center, it moves it over there. So the important thing to understand is the move command kind of is basically, uh, is basically applied to the last object you created. The best kind of way to imagine it is the last kind of, is that there's kind of like, um, uh, there's like a flag that uh, Maya kind of keeps in its memory uh, of the last kind of object that you manipulated. In fact, actually, no, that isn't the case. I'm going to show you in, in more detail. Let's just, uh, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete this. Okay, if I just run this, notice when you create an object, uh, it becomes selected. So actually, what's happening is the move is being applied to whatever object you've got selected, okay? Uh, and that's how it works by default. Now, what if I wanted to apply the move to, like, an object I've already got. So I'm going to create an object. Let's, let's imagine I'm going to, uh, 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 yeah, I'm going to create, I'm going to create a cube, but I'm going to name it. Okay, so I'm going to go name equals uh, my cube, just to be exciting. I can call it whatever I want, obviously. Okay, so let's just run these. I'm going to run these lines of code separately so that we can kind of understand what's going on here. So if I go, uh, let's run that my cube. Brilliant. Okay, uh, let's just hash that command out. Now, if I go into Outliner, Windows Outliner, there we are. We have my cube. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click somewhere on here. So this is deselected now. So if I just run this, uh, this will not work, okay? Uh, so if I run this move command, uh, what you'll see is the move command will not work. Can't do this. It's, the, there's nothing to select it for it to move, okay? So what I can do is, uh, uh, you know, quite often, you know, we don't want to just move what is selected. Uh, we want to move other objects in our scene as well. So we can specify that. That's absolutely fine. So what I need to do is just tell it, so put a comma in here, and tell it the name of the object I want to move. So here's the name. Uh, and so now if I run this, Kaboom, it's moved that object, okay? So even though I didn't have it selected, I just specified its name that we've got in here, and it moved that object. Uh, another approach that I can take as well is, um, uh, I'm going to remove this. Another approach that I can take as well is, uh, let's, I'm going to create a couple of cubes. So I'm going to, I'm going to call it, I'm going to create one called cube one, and then I'm going to go and create uh, cube two, okay, uh, and then if I just specify move here, let's see what happens. Kaboom. Okay, so what you'll see is uh, obviously uh, uh, I've moved. I created cube one, uh, but then I created cube two. And then I did the move, and obviously it's only moved cube two, okay? Uh, so if I click on here, that's cube two selected. You can see there we are. Uh, it's only moved cube two because as soon as I created cube two, cube one was deselected and cube two was selected. So only cube two was selected when I ran this move command. Great, okay? So obviously I could fix this by, uh, you know, again, I'll just uh, I'll just do it again just to, just to demonstrate. I could go cube uh, one. And then it would apply that move to cube one. So let's just flip that over and run it again. Boom. It looks exactly the same, but hey, this time the one that's moved is cube one because we told it to move cube one. And obviously, because we told it to move cube one, it's not going to move anything else, okay, even though it's selected, right? Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it 
and I hope this isn't going to get too confusing, but uh, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to create a variable called the cube, okay? Uh, again, I could call this variable anything. So I'm going to go this cube, the cube equals. So basically what happens is um, Python is going to save a reference to this cube that we've created to, in this variable. So whenever I use this variable, I mean this cube that's just been created here, okay? So again, I can just go here and just go the cube. Okay, notice because I'm using a variable, I'm not going to put quotes around each side of it. Okay, um, uh, I'm not going to put quotes around each side of it because that would obviously mean that it's a string, okay, uh, or a literal string. This is a variable, i.e., I'm not referring to something called the cube, I'm referring to a cube whose reference is stored, uh, or I'm referring to a, pol uh, a polygonal, pol polygonal object whose reference is stored inside of um, the variable, the cube, okay? Uh, okay, let's try that. Uh, sorry, I need to delete this. I knew I was getting a step. Let's try that. Kaboom, okay? So if I click on this again, you notice that cube one has moved, and that here's the important thing. Even though, again, just, just to kind of make that clear, even though I've stored a reference to cube one, inside this variable called the cube, it doesn't mean it's called the cube. Does that make sense? It just means that a reference is stored in a variable called the cube, okay? Uh, and the reference happens to be pointing to the cube that we named cube one, okay? So there's a number of different ways that you can reference it. You can, uh, so you can, if, if the thing's selected, uh, you can just run the moving com move command without uh, selecting it, uh, uh, sorry, without specifying uh, what it is. Um, if it isn't selected, we can specify either using a variable if we've stored it to a variable, or by specifying its name if we haven't stored it to a variable. Great. Uh, we can do other kind of commands as well. So let's just, um, uh, yeah, I'm just going to do, yeah, I'm just going to delete this and just shorten this. So uh, we can scale. If I can type the word scale in correctly. Uh, yeah, I'll keep that, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it straight onto Q2. So, delete that, delete that. Brilliant. Kaboom. There we are. We can scale. Uh, we can rotate. Uh, now, uh, uh, the, the documentation on rotation might be a little bit tricky. So, it's gonna just if I play that, let's see what happens. Yeah, so it does do a rotation. I think this rotation by default is actually specified in degrees. Uh, let me just check. Uh, so what you can do to check, we can just go into help, uh, uh, scripting reference, Python command reference. I use this all the time, so I don't try and remember everything. Uh, uh, I use this all the time. Uh, so I think you can just search as well. Uh, can I just go rotation? Is it going to search for me? Uh was it rotate? Yeah, rotate. There we are. So you can just type it in here. Look at the command. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, float, 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 float. Okay. Objects, flags. I'm trying to figure out where, how it's specifying that rotation. Yeah. So you can see here it says the rotation values are specified as Euler angles. Rx, Ry, Rz. Uh, 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 a horrendous way of specifying rotations, but anyway, we can. Uh, that's how it does it. Um, uh, and you can see in here, this is where the rotation is specified here. Uh, great. So I can actually combine this with a loop to do some kind of interesting things. So let's imagine I want to do a loop and generate like multiple objects, you know, in one go. This is what we want to do with Python. This is the power of Python. Okay, is we can you know repeat loops and do things that would take a long time very quickly. So um, I wanted to create a loop that's going to repeat uh, ten times. So. Uh, this specifies a loop that's going to repeat 10 times, okay? And inside, oh, sorry, uh, now it will specify a loop that re uh, repeats 10 times. Uh, so every time it goes through the loop, I will equal uh, 0 to 9. And, and, uh, so if I just go print i, if you're new to loops, here we go. Let's just print that off. Okay, so i, inside this loop, i is going to equal 0 to 9 through this loop. We can use that value then to kind of generate a cube and and, and position it uh, uh, as like a multiplier and using i as like a multiplier, if you will. So if I go, uh, so what we want to do is we want to go cmds dot polycube. So I'm going to 
generate that. There we go. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we'll do a move. Uh, let's just do a move to start off with. CMDS dot move. Um, and I'm just going to move it in one axis just to kind of keep things simple. Uh, and in the axis that we're going to move it in, uh, I need to use I as a multiplier. So I can't just go plus. Uh, uh, it might work. Okay. Um, uh, but I want to use I as a multiplier. Well, if I go plus, it just means I'm only ever going to have one unit of separation between each cube. Uh, obviously, I need to use a multiplier so I can specify really what that separation is. So if I want uh, two units between each one, I just put two in there. If I want three units between each cube, I put three in there. Let's just try that out. Okay. Uh, kaboom. There you go. Great. You can see... Uh, they're one unit size cubes, and I've got a unit between each cube there. Okay, uh, just to demonstrate that, if I go and push this up to say four, okay, this will put a bigger gap between each cube. There you go. Okay, so you can see how this multiplier. Hopefully, this kind of gives you a visual idea of how this multiplier works. Okay, uh, it's going to keep it on two. Uh, we can do the same thing. Let's just check out missed one. We can do the same thing uh, with uh, the rotate and the scale. Uh, so I'm going to CMDS. Uh, dot scale uh, and obviously when it loops through it's creating a cube but that cube's selected so so all the move and scale commands are just going to happen on the last cube that was created it's not going to affect any of the previously created cubes okay um, uh, okay so I'm going to do a scale and I will just uh, I think I might just scale uh, I might scale them all in fact, I'm going to create a variable, and I'm going to call it s for scale uh, equals because um, uh, I want to scale all of them kind of universally, right? So rather than having to write this calculation in for every parameter in the scale command, if I just kind of create an s variable here, I can just then specify the s variable in every parameter. So hopefully that will make sense. So I'm going to go scale. Um, I ah yes 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 so I'm gonna go I times uh, point three okay uh, and that's fine but obviously we've got a slight kind of issue here because if I go I times point three then the first in the first loop where it equals zero we're gonna get a scale of zero uh, which isn't really gonna make sense it just going to, means we we don't have the first cube is going to be kind of disappeared right so actually what we want to do is add this scale value this multiplied scale value here we want to add that to uh, uh our initial scale value which is one okay so so i want to take the the the, you know, the size that it was before and then just add this multiplier to that size okay hopefully that kind of makes sense so rather than the first loop where i equals zero i end up with a you know uh, uh, a cube that's basically just a point in space because it's it's zero width and height okay um, uh, and depth on the first loop I'll end up with a, a cube with the scale uh, um, one okay because obviously anything multiplied by zero will be zero so this would be zero and then we just add the one to it does that make sense in the next loop which will be one uh this will be one times point three so that'll be point three plus the one so it'll be one point three you get the idea hopefully let's put that into play so we're just going to s um s s i'm being a little bit inconsistent in how i lay out my parameters here so i do like to actually put spaces in there uh, like that you don't need to, but the key thing is kind of be consistent. The more you're consistent with your code, uh, the easier it is to read and the easier it is for you to work on. Let's just try that out, okay? So there you are. You can see I'm kind of scaling it up. Brilliant, okay? You can see the effect of that scale on all the axes, okay? So, and obviously I could do something similar with rotation. So that's how we can kind of use a loop to kind of generate uh, multiple uh, uh, objects and apply a slightly different transition to each of these. So effectively, this is kind of basically like a, a, a duplicate special in effect. Okay. And finally, 
um, what I want to do is have a look at something called the xform command. So uh, xform is actually basically a transform command. So rotation, scale, and and um, move are all examples of transforms. Uh, and so um, what this command actually does is encompass all of that capability, uh, rotation, scale, and transform in one command. Uh, and actually allows us to do a few more things as well. So I'll just give you an example here. So I've got a cube here. It's called uh, PQ1. Uh, and I'm just going to apply a, a, a rotation to that. So let's just put, say, 45 degrees. Let's just run that. Okay, it's going to rotate that PQ1 45 degrees. And obviously, as I said, I can combine that with other um, uh, transforms such as scale. Uh, so I can scale equals, and I can just go uh, 2, 2, 2. Okay, obviously, you have to kind of put the all the three axes in the, in these brackets here. Uh, so it's kind of like a, um, a tuple, in effect. Okay, uh, so if I click on that, there we are. So it's rotated it and it's done a scale as well. Uh, the other thing as well is it can do um, uh, really clever things. So it can be, um, uh, it can be relative. So for example, um, I'm just gonna hash this out and do a, in fact, I'll just change this. Uh, so I could say, hey, um, uh, I want to just scale it up a little bit. So I know I'm going to go 1.1 1 .1. and I just want to rotate it a bit. It's just so I'm going to only rotate it two degrees and I'm going to specify that I want it to be relative. So I can say, hey, uh, relative. Uh, spell relative right equals true okay again commas separating all of these parameters that we're setting here so it's just a much more capable transform though so obviously if you're doing something with uh, move scale and rotation and it's not uh, the capabilities of those commands isn't enough basically what I'm saying is have a look at this x form command and that may well solve the problem for you so yeah you can see that uh, it is kind of scaling up uh, and it's kind of rotating around as well as we do it. So it's, it's doing it relative, okay? Uh, another nice thing that you can do with this, so, um, uh, is that you can specify whether it sets the transform in local space or in world space. So in this example, there is only a world space, but imagine if I had this cube parented to something. Um, so I could either position this cube relative to the parent or relative to the world space, i.e. the entire scene. So there's a few really useful features in this X form just to be aware of, okay? Okay, so now that we've looked at transforms, uh, this is a good opportunity to look at the duplicate tool, okay? So what we can do is we can just go, um, I've got a chapel here, it's called chapel three, and I can just uh, duplicate that. So I can just go uh, cmds dot duplicate. So there's actually a command inside, uh, a built-in command for doing duplication that we can use. And I just gotta go chapel three, okay. Uh, let's do that, okay. So we'll just run that command. Okay, so it's created a new chapel and it's just kind of given it chapel four. So it's just continued the numbering system uh, and that's fine. Uh, it doesn't look like anything's happened, but actually if we click on chapel four, what you'll see is the duplicate is exactly over the top of um, the old chapel, uh, which is why I said kind of now we've learned move, uh, we can kind of learn duplicate because often when you duplicate something, you need to move it. Okay, so uh, yeah, all we've got to do is apply a move to this. Um, so uh, in order to move the duplicate and not the original, uh, what we can do is I can just go, uh, I can create a variable. Uh, I can give that variable any name I want. Okay, but basically what will happen is uh, the duplicate will be assigned to this variable, okay? So that means that now when I wanna manipulate it, I just need to reference this variable and that will move the duplicate, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go, uh, let's have a look. Uh, do a, let's do a move. So I'm just gonna use the move command, okay? Uh, it's quite a large model, so I've gotta move it quite a bit, okay? Uh, and then obviously it's called uh, my model, okay? Um, uh, yep, let's run that. And you can see there it's created it there. And hopefully there you are. You can see it's moved it for us as well. Uh, one of the little gotchas is, uh, if you remember in X form, we would put the reference to the model 
as the first parameter that's passed to it. Uh, in the move command and the scale mark command and the rotate command, uh, you put the reference to the object that we want to move last. So a little bit of a got you there. Uh, just be aware of that. Okay.